Bye. Uh, ooh. Anyway. <laughs> Just got home from class and the thought popped into my head that I should probably film myself talking because I haven't done it in a while. Mainly because um, we just had spring break. I literally just put my hand in front of the camera. Um, we just had spring break. Um, and for that period of time, I was just mentally preparing myself to go home. <laughs> Neutrally stated. Um, it's just like being back in my hometown occasionally puts me in a weird funk. Not that I don't like my hometown. I think I've learned to like it after I've left it. Um, but I think in this circumstance, I'm at a point right now where it kind of just feels like I need to move on and I need to go to a new place and live somewhere new and going home isn't as easy as it used to be because I feel a little bit displaced when I'm there. Even though I could rave about my little spots that I love to go to when I go home. Outside of that, I feel like uh, it's just, it's a place that isn't meant for me anymore. Um, so, went through spring break, came back to Syracuse, spent my time readjusting. Um, so, <laughs> um, something I want to talk about that I have been thinking about, sorry, I'm so snotty because I literally just got home and, you know, I'm just going to go get a tissue and I'm going to keep speaking and hopefully you can hear me as I walk away. Um, dirt in the bathroom, but what I want to talk about. Um, from my, I'm just going to stand over here until I'm done. Um, from my last video, um, as I was literally exporting my last video for this series, um, I went and I looked in my voice recordings because sometimes in my voice recordings, um, let me rephrase that. Instead of journaling, um, sometimes I will record, wow, record a voice memo <laughs> because sometimes it is easier just to talk about it. Like I'm doing right now, very similar to what I'm doing right now, obviously, but it's just me talking to my phone and not having my face recorded. Um, so I haven't done that in a really long time, um, mainly because I just haven't felt the need to, but as I was exporting my last reflection video, I was like, let's just like see what's in there. And there is a very angry video of myself after listening to a couple of these voice recordings. Someone's car alarm is going off. Um, being like, before I even explained what my reaction was, these voice recordings that I'm referencing, there are two different ones made within the same week where I am almost hysterically crying about uh, the people that I was friends with because of the way they were treating me during that period of time and the way they were making me feel. Um, and that voice recording was in the spring of 2022, so almost two years ago. It was in April I made those voice recordings. We're coming up on a two year anniversary here, but um, I made those voice recordings because, <laughs> because I didn't want to journal about it. I just wanted to talk about it and cry for a little bit. And I was so broken up and distraught to the point where I was thinking some very unhappy thoughts, if you can deduce what I'm talking about. Um, and why is your paw dirty? Or am I just seeing things? What did you put your paw in? There is a cat over there and I'm 
I'm just asking him a couple questions. Um, <laughs> I'll look at that later. Um, I'm just noticing that your paw is a little discolored. But maybe, maybe I'm the one who's seeing things. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, I was thinking some very unhappy thoughts. And I did do something about that. I didn't just, like, have them and sit in them. Like, I, I went and I proactively helped myself. I know that because I, I remember this experience I was going through. But I was speaking about these friends that I had two years ago that I had I and, and it's the same friends that I have ha been having consistent issues with, not anymore, since we are not friends anymore, obviously. Um, but it's the same people that I was having problems with. Um, honestly, since my freshman year, I, I was having issues with them up until last semester. So if you can imagine, um, almost about four years of consistent bullshit with these people and I'm in these voice recordings, like letting it loose and crying about it because I was having such intense and horrible problems with them. And for some reason I stayed friends with them and then I went and lived with them during my semester abroad last semester. Um, and you can all imagine how that went. Not well, um, but there is a very angry, video recording of myself talking about it because I was just so pissed off because I, I didn't know what these voice recordings were. I didn't know until I listened to them in that moment. Then I was like, oh my God, I'm talking about these fucking people who I just had a semester in hell with a couple months ago. Why did I continue to be friends with them, especially when they were making me feel this way and have these, not that it was on purpose, but the issues that I was facing with these people, it was prompting me to have these thoughts. Like I was being pushed into an area in which I was having these thoughts. It's not like they were intentionally trying to make me feel that way. Or were they? Who knows? But they weren't intentionally trying to make me think that way. And I know that. Um, but I was thinking that way because of the intensity of these issues. And I was so fucking mad. I was so fucking mad. I was like, why did I continue to be friends with these people? And you want to know why? One, because they were a, they were kind of all that I knew. Like they were they were all that I knew on this campus were those people and they were my friends. And or at least I thought they were my friends. And you know, even though I did my best to have serious conversations with them about how they were treating me, trying to fix these issues with them, they would tell me time and time again that they would you know, like, oh, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be a good friend. I'm changing. I'm, I'm setting up boundaries. I'm communicating. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Uh, when in reality, they weren't doing jack shit. They weren't actually doing anything. They were just telling me that they were doing things, that they were working on themselves. Come to think of it, I didn't see any of that work happen. I didn't experience any of that work that they were apparently going through. And then I had an awful fucking semester a couple months ago. It was bad. And I'm at a point right now, I was just writing, I just started writing this letter to one of my friends. Um, I had told her that this is something I would like to start doing. I told her um, that I wanna start writing longer letters to her since we communicate very infrequently and I do send her a good amount of letters but it's normally like oh here's this cute card that I found at the store today I hope you enjoyed it I hope you're doing well I miss you very much in comparison to what I want to start doing is like I miss you very much here's this cute letter detailing how I'm actually doing um so it's I got like halfway through it and then I had to go to class um so it's very lengthy and there's a lot of words on this sheet of paper there's actually two sheets of paper there's probably going to be fucking four of these that i'm sending to her but i was writing in here and as i've probably stated multiple times before i'm not friends with these people anymore the experiences i had with them were very negative and they have been very negative for a couple years 
and I found myself to be very confused as to why I stayed friends with them. And I think literally a minute ago, I was trying to get through that, but I just didn't finish my thought and I moved on. But I think like, as I was saying, they were kind of all that I knew. They were my only friends, to be honest, or my only good friends. Um, the ones that I spent the most consistent amount of time with, and I don't think good friends should be judged based off of time spent. It's the relationship itself, and I don't think I knew that in that point of time. And, you know, they were telling me that they were working on things, and they were changing and fixing things, and getting better, but they actually weren't, and they were full of shit. And I stuck with them because, you know, I fight very hard for my friends or whoever I find myself to be friends with. I fight very hard for those people because I care about them and I love them and I want them to become better people. I fought very hard to keep those relationships because I think I idolized the relationships they had with other people outside of whatever they had shown me. I remember a consistent issue I experienced with these people last semester was that they would show these beautiful forms of love and affection and communication to all of their other friends, things that I had been asking them for, for a long time. Having, I, I had had multiple serious conversations with them being like, hey, I just need you to be a good friend. Can you do that? And they would say yes, and then they wouldn't do it. And then I started living with them and I would see them do it for other people. They would do it for other people. And it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It was the most mind fucky situation I'd ever been in. Um, I think I idolized those relationships they held with other people and I hoped that they would exhibit the same behavior towards me, but they never did. And I could never understand why they didn't. I still don't. But I think, you know, it's one of those things where I, I'm not gonna understand something that isn't meant to be understood. I am just going to take it at face value and find myself a better avenue to go down. To go down. Um, but something that I was thinking about when I, this is why I'm transitioning into this letter. Um, something that I was thinking about in relation to this topic that I was writing about in this letter to my friend is that um, literally my opening line, um, I hope you enjoy this letter of little updates from me. If I can be honest, not too much is going on with me. I don't go out too much or spend time with people outside of class unless I choose to. I've been doing my best to take care of myself. I've been through three years of unlikable friends, and for once in my life, I feel a sense of mental peace. And then I go on to like talk about why I feel that way. And I will go on to talk about why I feel that way. Um, it's not that I don't have people to spend time with. It's not that I don't want to go out and do things. This is what I choose to do. I still see these people around campus. I'm still in classes with them and that is totally okay. I don't feel any sort of way about that. I just don't feel the need to fix anything, fix anything, go out of my way to talk with them or spend time with them. That's not something I'm interested in. I think I'm at a point right now where you know, I'm doing my best to protect my peace. And I think I've protected it. I, I see those things on the internet where, where they're like, I think I've protected my peace so much that now I only have two friends and I watch movies every night, which is the truth. <laughs> and it's nothing that I feel poorly about. Like that is so lovely for me that I have found my select couple of people who treat me so well and that I have beautiful loving relationships with. I would prefer to protect my peace while they find theirs, the people that I used to be friends with. I don't need to go out of my way to show them how to find their peace. Um, but it's it's frustrating, you know, it's frustrating hearing those voice memos and wondering why I stayed friends with these people. I think I view friendships and relationships a lot differently now than I used to. 
I will be honest, I used to be very desperate for friends. And I could never understand why I couldn't keep a lot of them. That's probably because I was grabbing at whatever was around me. I wasn't actually taking the time to foster and build a relationship with someone. I was just blindly grabbing at something that could be good enough. As long as I had a friend, what did it matter? But it does matter. And I think I really, really dug my own fucking grave. Um, for a long time I was doing that. It really made me question whether or not I was a good person with the amount of issues and problems I was going through with these people. It made me wonder if I was a good friend. It made me wonder if I was a good person. It made me wonder if anything about me was likable because these people showed so much, what is the word, apathy towards me? They're the most unempathetic people I'd ever met. And something that I find interesting is that I would laugh whenever they would say that they are empathetic people because they're not. It's very easy to be sympathetic towards someone. It's a lot harder to be empathetic and it showed in those people. At this point in time, I don't feel really anything towards them. I don't. I don't feel anything towards the handful of other people I've gotten into friendship issues while I've been here on campus. I don't feel a lot of things. I really don't. <laughs> um, what I do feel is a sense of mental peace because I have finally reached a point where I have removed the people who have made me feel so sad from my life. I've either removed them or I've moved away. And I think a lot of the anger I experienced in that recording, I'll, to be honest, if, if I show that video, there's gonna be lots of cuts in it because I'm, I am saying some things. I'm saying some things, but I think a lot of the anger in that video stems from me wanting to fight for my younger self. And even though it's just two years ago, that's my younger self. Wishing I could have made better choices and gone down a different path, but I didn't. I stayed on whatever fucking path I was on and I experienced what I experienced. I think I was so angry that I had decided in that moment to continue to subject myself to those people, that I continued to just tough it and, and, and push through and they're gonna change, they're gonna be better people. They're not, they weren't. And I can't tell you if they still are good or bad people. I can't tell you. I don't really care to know. <laughs> Um, if they have figured things out and they have become better people, that's great. Do it away from me. Because I just don't think it's going to work. <laughs> um, this feels very scrambled. But these are the thoughts that I have accumulated within myself and want to talk about right now. I have many thoughts, but these are the ones I want to discuss. Also because I was literally writing about it. I was literally, oh, I woke him up. He was sleeping. <laughs> but I was literally writing about, I was literally writing about them. I was. Um, I was also writing about how I got a new lamp. I got a new lamp. You know what, that's it. Field trip, usually I have these videos done in my room. <laughs> I have these videos done in my room. Um, but we're gonna move out here and I'm gonna show you this goddamn lamp. I'm gonna show it to you. Um, here it is. Here's my lamp.
You saw that, right? It's a touch lamp. Um, that's my favorite thing. I'm in love with it. Anyway, I was also writing about that in the letter. Um, that I got a new touch lamp. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it, okay? I'm excited. Um, but TBD on including that other video of myself where I'm very angry. Otherwise, this is what's going on with me right now. I'm doing a lot of puzzles. I'm watching a lot of movies. We now have a child in this apartment. His name is Snoopy. I love him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's it.